trapezoids are just two other quadrilaterals that are not parallelograms. And it's not like that stupid rectangle rhombus square where they all share properties with each other. So let's tackle trapezoid first. Do you know anything about a trapezoid? It has one set, one set of parallel lines. That is everything that the book says about trapezoids. A trapezoid is a quadrilateral with exactly one pair of parallel sides. And the sides that are parallel, the book names them as bases. Most of you guys see a trapezoid in your head and it looks like this, doesn't it? Which one? It looks like this one. Most of you guys see a trapezoid that looks like this. Something like that. But as long as you have one set of parallel lines, That could also be a trapezoid. So a trapezoid can have two right angles. You know, this is the weird part. So the one that really screws you guys up is this trapezoid. It's turned on its side. And I have to say, it's turned on its leg. So we get these two new names. The parallel sides are called bases. The non-parallel sides are called legs. Okay? We are just talking about trapezoids right now. So in any trapezoid, it has two sets of base angles. These are base angles because they are connected to the base. And these are base angles because they are connected to the other base. And the book stops there. Like, that's all you need to know. You should know everything else. But do you? Is there any conclusions you can draw from any of the pictures that I've drawn on or, or highlighted or colored? Is there any like numerical properties or angle properties for trapezoids? Are the opposite angles considered? Opposite angles have no relationship. None. Two base angles are, um, are the like two base two. angles have no relationship. The, what, uh, how, oh, the consecutive base angles are like, no. There's a triangle and there's a parallel. Well, I mean, the triangle, right? You're talking about this angle right here and this angle right here. No, those are not. Those are base angles. No, the other base angles. Okay, so the angles across the legs, right? That's those are called same side interior angles. And that's, that's the connection because this line is parallel to this line and this is a transversal. So what do you know about these same side interior angles? They're supplementary. That is all that you know. That's it. That angle one and angle three add up to 180. And on a completely different spectrum, what do you know about angle two and angle four? They add up to 180. Angle three and angle four have no relationship. Angle three and angle two have no relationship. Only angle one and angle three have a relationship. That's it. There is an imaginary wall 
between those two angles, and no math can occur on the other side of that wall. So I'll put hard brakes on this right now. There's two things that you should know about trapezoids. It has one pair of parallel sides. You got that down? They're called bases. And the consecutive angles, they're the same side interior angles are supplemented. Most of you guys can do that, you understand that, you feel comfortable with that. But as soon as I flip the page, you guys start to confuse yourselves. Okay, so let me flip the page. You ready? Another new shape. Trapezoid. This is called an isosceles trapezoid. An isosceles trapezoid is a trapezoid that has congruent legs. So now the only thing that I'm changing is that these two legs are exactly the same size. Once you know an isosceles trapezoid exists, then you have a lot of isosceles properties. So one specific isosceles trapezoid property is that base angles are congruent. That's not new, is it? We've said that time and time again. But the new part is trapezoids have two sets of base angles. So now you have two sets of congruent base angles. Let's go with a weird number. If this angle is 50... This one's 50 because they are congruent base angles of an isosceles trapezoid. On a regular trapezoid, we can't do that. Well, if this angle's 50, it has to be 130 because they are still same side interior angles. Well, because it's an isosceles trapezoid, these two base angles are also equal. And would you look at that? If you add all those numbers together, you get 360 degrees. That's the, that's the last layer of isosceles trapezoids, or trapezoids in general. So, how much confusion do we have right now? A lot? Eh? Not much? The other part for isosceles trapezoids is these diagonals are congruent. And I don't, if the property is true, it's not my favorite property because it starts to confuse you guys with rhombus, no, not rhombus, rectangle and square. And then we haven't even gotten to the tested property yet. There is one more property of isosceles trapezoids, or trapezoids in general, and I completely skipped over it. You remember mid-segments of triangles? Well, there's also mid-segments of trapezoids. Now, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is the mid-segment is equal to half the sum of the bases. I like to say that this is my formula. The mid segment is equal to the top plus the bottom divided by 2. It's half the sum of the bases. So the line in the middle is a mid segment. A mid segment is still created by connecting midpoint to midpoint. So let's call the top 10, let's call the bottom 30, and let's solve for the mid-segment. Top is 10, bottom is 30, so top plus bottom is 40, and what is 40 divided by 2? 20. Now I add this layer, there should be a consistent change from the top plus 10 to the bottom plus 10. There should always be a consistent change. Yes, sir. What does the T stand for? Top. Mid-segment is equal to top 
plus bottom divided by 2. What about 4 and 16? Plus six. Plus six. Now the reason I show you guys that is for this reason. Because if you were going to solve this, it would be seven equals top plus bottom divided by two. And most of you guys don't want to do that kind of math, do you? Well, how do you get from 4 to 7? Plus 3. So do it again. And it works. It saves you from doing a lot of icky algebra. That's the test question right there. That kind of mid-segment math. Okay. Which ones are the bases right here? The two the parallel sides. So make sure you don't say that this is a base. That has its own name. It's called a leg. So I took this shape and I rotated it so that you guys got an accurate view of the bases. If this is 70, how big is this one? Because consecutive angles are supplementary. Now that is an isosceles trapezoid, correct? It's marked as one. So if this is 70, how big is this base angle? Now, what is this? That's just a trapezoid. So there is an imaginary wall that you cannot map across. If this is 60, if that's 100, there is no relationship here. There is no relationship here. There is no relationship here. There's only a relationship up and down between the bases. And sometimes that's hard for you guys. Okay, we did it. Two shapes down. Here's our last shape. The last shape of the unit. The last shape of the year. You ready? I'm, I'm not ready. Okay. <laughs> You know what a kite is? It's a thing that you like put a string on. Here is the definition for a kite. You will never, ever, ever guess it. A kite is a quadrilateral with two sets of consecutive congruent sides. Oh, so the sides that are like touching each other? No. So what it looks like is purple and purple, right? That is a set of consecutive congruent sides. And then another set of consecutive congruent sides. Gnarly. But opposite sides cannot be congruent, or otherwise it would be a rhombus. So it's two sets of consecutive congruent sides, but opposite sides are not congruent. That's what it looks like. A kite is a quadrilateral in which two pairs of consecutive sides are congruent and no opposite sides are congruent. And then the diagonals are perpendicular, just like a rhombus and a square. And the book neglects seven other properties of a kite. The seven properties the book feels like are intuitive to the learner or that you should have already learned. Oh, I think it's funny that they give kids kites to play with, but when I give you one in 10th grade or as in geometry, you guys don't want to touch them. It looks cool. Yeah, so kites 
And this is just a personal feeling. Like, I don't like kites. I don't like them because that's the book feels like that's the only definition that you can't come to by yourself. Everything else you should be able to draw conclusions from. So there are seven more. Let's see if we can knock them out. No. That's, yeah, that's one of them right here. Well, that doesn't count to the extra seven. This is where the vocabulary part really screws you guys up. I'll go with an obvious one. Kites are created by two isosceles triangles. I mean, you can see it. You see this isosceles triangle right here? Oh, yeah. And this isosceles triangle right here? So kites are created by two sets of isosceles triangles. So that means the base angles are So that means that base angles are congruent. Right? But when you, as soon as you know that it's created by an isosceles triangle. What does that open up? If you draw an altitude and an isosceles triangle, then it creates two congruent right triangles. So then you get CPCTC. That means that this piece is equal to this piece. So, so the way you say that without screwing anything up is that the long diagonal bisects the short diagonal. The long diagonal bisects the short diagonal. Does the short diagonal do anything to the long diagonal? No. So, if this short diagonal is 10, how big is each piece? If the long diagonal is 20, can you make any justification about each piece of the, no. It could be 4 and 16. It could be 9 and 11. We don't know. What else can we say? Is there? F what? Yeah, that's the reflective property, right? Um, can we say anything about, or did you even see? These two triangles. Oh, yeah, I saw those, but I don't know what's cool about them. Those two triangles are congruent triangles by the side, side, side shortcut. This side is congruent to this side, this side is congruent to this side, and you have the reflexive side in the middle, which unlocks another mystery of kites. That, oh man, this is tough to say. The angle between the non congruent sides is congruent. So these two are non congruent sides. This angle, non congruent sides. This angle, those two angles are congruent. It has one set of congruent opposite angles. Not inverted. And then once you say that, you should be able to justify that CPCTC says that this angle is congruent to this angle. And this angle is congruent to this angle. So the long diagonal bisects the opposite angles. Holy kite. You see how confusing this can be? The long diagonal bisects the opposite angles. There's like nine different properties inside of kites. 
and, and, and um, the purpose for me doing this is to really connect all the learning. But once you like experience a kite, you'll really see how easy these shapes are. They're really not that bad. You hate kites now? No, I said I got hooked on kites. I was hooked on kites. So let's explore this. So right, here is a kite. Right? It says that J F K is 38 degrees. And that K G F is 52 degrees. Now just think about this in its most basic format. Do you know how to find angles inside of a triangle? Yes. That's the part that's going to save your life. How big is this angle? 90. So 90 plus 38 plus something equals 180. 52. Now, you could have said, Baker, we don't need that because this big triangle is an isosceles triangle and base angles are congruent. That works there. All right? So how big is this angle? 30. Well, you can say it's 38 because 38 plus 52 plus 90 equals 180. Or the long diagonal bisects the opposite angle. So if this piece is 38, this piece has to be 38. None of this math right here, none of that math talks to any of this math down here. They are literally broken by a barrier. You have to have at least one angle in the bottom of the triangle to be able to solve for any angle in the, in the top. Or, no, you have to have at least one angle in the bottom to do any math in the bottom. So if this angle is 50, how do you want to solve for something? So 90, 90. This one's 40 because 40 plus 50 plus 90 equals 180. This one's 40 because congruent base angles. Or CPCTC. Or CPCTC. Now, if you see a kite completely mapped out, does this angle equal this angle? Yes. Are these two angles congruent? No. Does that all add up to 360? Yes. Yes. So this angle right here and this angle right here have no relationship. They don't. But when you add them together, they should be equal across the two angles between the non-congruent sides. Cool. Kites suck, don't they? There's a lot of properties. All right, let's just try a couple questions here. I'm sorry, what shape is that? Nope. Nope. It's just a quadrilateral. It's just a quadrilateral. We have no information that says that that is parallel. You need to know that this piece is parallel to that piece in order to justify that it is a trapezoid. Now it's a trapezoid. No. It's not a trapezoid. It's an isosceles trapezoid. So, it's isosceles because it has two congruent legs. So, if this angle is 75, if this angle is 75, now remember, when you're taking your test, you're not going to have this ugly guy screaming at you, no, no, no. You're just going to do it, and you're probably going to be right, aren't you? Hopefully, yes, ma'am. So, does a, um, a isosceles trapezoid have the same properties as a regular trapezoid? It has all the properties of a regular trapezoid, but the extra property is that it has congruent base angles. So, what is this? Quadrilateral. Quadrilateral. It becomes a trapezoid when I do that. Now, in this trapezoid, are these two angles congruent? No. That's the one difference. But do these two angles still add up to 180? Yes. 
So you see the comparison between the two figures? In a regular trapezoid, there's a wall that goes right here. Right? Now on the test, you'll see when it looks like that, it says what is the value of x? What is the mid-segment of that trapezoid? Top plus bottom divided by 2 equals the mid-segment. So 5 plus 15 is 20. 20 divided by 2 is 10. All right, here's a kite. All of the stuff you can solve for, you have one angle on the top, you have one angle on the bottom. There probably should be some markings like this to signify that it is a kite. <coughs> How do you want to approach that one? 30 plus 90. 30 plus 90. 360. Hey, that's cool. Kites aren't that bad. It's 300 plus 60. That's why I did that. That's so cool. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. So there's what it looks like all pretty. Um, okay, so let's let's take a step out of the regular geometry world for a second. And let's really step into the pretty piece of geometry world. So all these questions are nowhere near what is expected of you guys. Ready? Are you ready? No. Okay, here we go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <coughs> now, what shape is that? It's a kite. It's a kite. It is a kite because it has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides. Now, all the people in the last class were like, Baker, 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 please, please, please draw this diagonal. No, why would you do that? Because it makes you, makes you guys want to see it, that it is a kite, and you don't need that diagonal. Because then you like come with the R pi of like 55 or so the property that we're looking for here is what you know about those two triangles. They are congruent by the side, side, side shortcut. This triangle up here and this triangle down here are two congruent triangles. So the long diagonal bisects those opposite angles. If this is 3x, if this is 40, so all you're doing right now is solving for a missing angle inside of a triangle. 3x and 11x and 40 all add up to 180. Does that kind of make sense? Why did I not do 3x plus 55y equals 40? Because then you have two, two variables that you can't solve for. 14x plus 40 equals 180. Subtract 40. Subtract 40 from both sides. 14x is the other one. 40x is the same. Plug it back in. 3 so times 10. 3 times 10. 3 times 10. That's supposed to happen. Down here. Now, it is your job as a student to know that CPCTC or in a kite the angle between the non-congruent sides is congruent. So if this angle is 110, how big is this one? Then you can say 55y equals 110. And y equals 2. Is it that bad? No. So you're saying your test question isn't that hard? Oh, is that a test question? No, that's a question we just did in class right now. Oh, so it's a test question? No. <laughs> no. It's pretty similar to what you'll see on Friday, but it's not exactly the same. The thought process is the same. Yes, you have a test on Friday. It's been up there all week. Somebody erased it, thought they were funny. I like them to look at it. Send in the email, too. You know what that? No. Yeah. I don't think that. No.
This problem. So, if you know that this is the long diagonal, then how big is this angle? So, inside of this triangle right here, there should be 180 degrees. So we get 56 right here and 34 right here. Is there any way we can solve for anything down here? No, there's not. It's impossible to do that. Don't even try. Um, you ever see the path the last class took? Yeah. The path the last class took was this. Is your last class a very deep class? They are now. It works, it's just a lot longer. All right. Let's just talk about how to do this when we're not actually going to do it. There's only one way to, only one way to start this problem. So you could put a y minus 9 right here, and you could put a y right here. But is there any way to use triangle math to solve? Because you get y minus 9 plus y plus 4x plus 13. You can't solve that. What is the only property of a kite you can use to actually start this process? Plus 13. That these two opposite angles between the non-congruent sides are congruent. So I did that in my head, I got x equals 28. All right, and then when x equals 28, 28 times 4 is 112. Hold on, I can do it. 112 and 112 plus 13 is 125. You have to get that angle 125, and then you can say 125 plus y minus 9 plus y equals 180 to solve for y. All right, but starting the process with these two. And before we run out of time, here is the mid-segment question on your test. Right? Like, it can't be that easy. 5, 10, 15, that's stupid. They all have the same variable, too, so it shouldn't be that hard. Yeah, but it's, it's you getting you guys away from the mental math part and doing the actual physical math. You move it over here so I have room. So remember the formula is the mid-segment is equal to the top plus the bottom divided by 2. You're just filling in quantities. What is the length of the mid-segment? This is the mid-segment. The top is 2x minus 4. So the first thing I would recommend doing is combining like terms.
multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the denominator. And then you have to distribute this number. Stupid 10 shows up again, right? Plus 2. Please, for the sake of humanity, plug that number back in and make sure your pattern works. 20 minus 4. 20 plus 4. 30 plus 2. Plus 6. Plus eight and plus eight. That's how you solve for a mid segment. Yeah. So that's the test question right there. All that algebra logged in there, and that was like so nice because it was your last test. I wanted to leave you with like one lasting good impression of me. I put a bunch of decimals in there. You're welcome. You don't have to cheer right now. You can cheer later. Okay. What happened to our Christmas tree? We just made it. Uh, this is the last homework assignment we're giving you all year. And it's a lot of questions, so I'm going uh, to expect that you guys do all of this.